Amazing. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming here. Uh, my name is uh, Daniel Bistet, and I work as a senior concept artist at Goodbye Cancer Studios in Stockholm. This is my Twitter and Mastodon handle, and a little bit of a biscuit there for you, who knows? Okay. So at Goodbye Cancer Studios, we do VFX for film and TV, and we do game cinematics and uh, motion capture. In my personal time, I do like uh, yeah, like personal artwork. Love Eevee, love Blender. It's very cool. Also do uh, Blender add-ons, uh, which you can find and download for free on my uh, Gumroad page. And uh, I also like do stuff for the Blender Foundation. Sit with the uh, amazing Julian here in the sculpting module, uh, and also the modeling module, and uh, like do. Demo files, like the hair stuff here. Okay, very cool. So today I will show you <laughs> how to make character grooming in the new uh, hair system. That, uh, give it up for Simon, by the way. Simon Thomas in here, like there, yeah. <laughs> so this is what we are gonna go through. This is a uh, scan character and the hair there. So let's see if we can do this without Blender crashing. So the hair sort of like consists out of these uh, broad uh, red clumps, and then you have the thinner yellow clumps. We have something called uh, flyaway hairs, represented by this blue color, and then some very like art directed. Um, hair that is represented by this green color. Okay. There we go. So um, when I create hair, and as we do in our studio, we usually use a hair cap that is separate from the um, head mesh. So that means that we don't really have to worry about the topology changing on the character mesh or the density of it or whatever. We can just bind uh, the hair growth mesh and place the hair on that. And I can check the uh, Y frame here as well. Oh, shit. Okay, so you can see here that I have a vertex group which represents the hairline in the middle. And this is also, I'm using uh, a hard edge here. So I can split the mesh into two separate pieces, and this will help us with interpolation of the hair later on. Let's see. Okay, time to add some hairs. So I start by selecting this uh, growth mesh, the hair cap, then go to curve and add an empty hair. Then we can go to sculpt mode. Have a look here. And there's a bunch of cool brushes here on the side. So add will just add hair where you place them. And you can set the count just like the old hair system. And you can also delete because you are never satisfied. Okay, and here, the density brush. So this is just like Julian showed earlier, where you can set uh, the density with this thing up here. Press that, and then you can sort of like drag how dense your hair should be placed. So I'm just gonna start here. And up here, you also have uh, symmetry. So I'm using X symmetry, just filling this up with hairs not really bothering about anything really. Now we can also set the curve length, shape and stuff like that. So the interpolate here will sort of like if the hair is already groomed somehow, um, if I add a new hair, it's just gonna stand right out. But if we use the, I should use the, uh, density thing here. I'm just going to delete some. So if I 
set the um, interplay to the length, shape, and point count, it will sort of inherit the shape, point count, and length to its neighbors. Here's the comb brush. Nothing that is, it's great, <laughs> but uh, self-explanatory, I think. So you can see here when I'm grooming that it's not really grooming the hair in the back. So I would say the reason for that is we were a camera here looking at that and we had the sphere um, sort of like option going on. So that means that when the brush is placed here, it's not touching these parts. So I prefer to use the projected version. So then you sort of like just what's behind in sea depth will be uh, affected. You have the snake hook brush, which sort of like you can pull the end of the hair and just continue doing that. So that's great. You can grow the hair. So the current setting here in scaling is that it scale uniform is off. If that is on, it will scale the hair from the root like this. But I think the new option with, with, where it's just off is better because then the hair just continues along its direction. We also have pinch. Usually do this kind of stuff procedurally, but it's good that it's there. Puff will align the hair to the surface normal. Smooth will smooth the hair. I should mess it up a bit first so it's like meh. Okay. So if I just continue uh, brushing like this, it's just going to be straight. And then we have a slide as well, if you want to like be very specific about how you place some hairs. So that's the grooming tools. Going over to paint selection. <clears throat> so by default, this is set to working with points on the hair. So if I have that selected, start grooming, it just affects that painted area. But what I prefer to do is set it to the projected version. So that means, uh, oh, sorry, huh. I meant uh, this little thing. What's it called? Set select mode. Yeah, it's curve. So that means like when I do the paint selection, it will paint the entire hair. Very cool. Blip, 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 blip. Here's temperature. Shrink repair. Okay. So one of the things to note as well is that it's important with uh, the density of the hair. So I just prepared a little node group. So this is showing off the density of each hair. So I can. Um, since the hair is created by points that are connected, I can't, I need to have enough resolution to like shape it. So if we're going to re, uh, sort of like visualize this, I can drop in a, uh, a sample curve node, put it here, and then I can change the density afterwards. So I'm going to set this to 15. And then I can actually like just apply this modifier. Boom. And now I have another density on the hair. Very nice. So time to start grooming. So I'm going to turn off symmetry and start paint selection. So I want to figure out sort of the center line. There we go. Painting, painting. Oh yeah, need to hold in shift for adding to the selection. So I'm just very uh, rough in the beginning. Like, don't really care. Just control I to invert that selection. Don't like this. So I just want to see here that I have grabbed the correct hairs. Seems like I almost have it right. This one. And we have a bunch of like different lengths and it's not looking very good. So what I like to do is just like flood fill the entire thing like this. Whoop. 
and then groom it sort of back in place, then shrink it back down. Cool, so that is exactly how a professional hairdresser would do. <laughs> Quickly grow, grow the hair. Okay. Great. Now, one thing we can note is that <clears throat> this looks kind of low res. We can see like a point here, point there. It's just very blocky. So in the render settings, you can go down here to curve somewhere. I'm not finding it, but there's this awesome like search function. Curves. So we're changing from strand to strip, and now it has actual thickness. That's good. And we're going to add additional subdivisions as well, so that it uh, displays correctly in the viewport. Nice. So one thing that's sort of annoying at the moment is that we got a bit of like intersection here. So I'm just going to drop in a modifier. And we have the whoop, shrink wrap hair curves. So this is basically <coughs> shrink wrapping the hair to a surface that you point to. So I'm going to select the uh, hair cap right now. And you can see here, if I set the above surface like this, then it will just shrink wrap everything to the surface. And then, but what I want to do is make sure that the points that are sort of like the, on the uh, inner side of the mesh, they should be pushed out. Uh, so I'm just going to change the above surface to zero. And then if I change offset distance, oh, I have to turn it on as well. So there we go. Nice. So this means that I can like continue to groom, making sure that there is no uh, intersection. Of course, we can also use this collision thing. But the nice thing here is that you can have like an offset distance as well. Dun, 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 dun. Let's go. What's next? OK, let's set up the main hair here. OK, I'm just going to call this hair. And we have a uh, totally empty geometry node setup. So what I want to start doing is drop in like a hair noise uh, node. Hair curves noise. And there we go. And if I start changing the distance, we can see that this is just um, sort of adding a noise to the hair. And what I want to do is sort of like not have to like create this overlap with each um, hair strand by grooming, but rather do it procedurally. So uh, the cumulative offset here is sort of like it increases the offset further down the uh, hair strand. So I prefer to turn that off. And another thing I want to do is to make sure that we keep the length. You can see here that it's kind of like very messy at the moment. So I want to scale down the frequency. So I'm changing scale along curve. Just like, yeah, something more like this. It's nice. Now, this hair noise thing is sort of like going, uh, doing things per uh, position per point, I believe. And so I want a random per hair strand. So I'm just going to do offset per curve. And that will give us more randomness. That's white hair. I don't want white hair. I want the nice red hair shader that I made. Okay. So another thing with CG hair is that you usually see, or bad CG hair, it's just like, eh, 
ends sort of like straight. But real hair has a tendency to uh, like curve at the end, like a little whoop. So we're just going to add, <laughs> you know, it's professional talk here. Uh, uh, let's see. What's it called? Roll hair, roll hair curves. Okay. So what this does is that it sort of, sort of like rolls up the hair like this. We, <laughs> but we would just want it at the end, so we don't want a long. Uh, yeah, let's just put that down, just a tad, and then we can randomize the orientation of this as well. Get a little break up. Cool, that's good enough for me. Let's see. Okay, let's create those uh, wide clumps now. So I'm going to drop down on interplate hair curves node. And everything is gone. It's horrible. So the thing is, like, to do this, we need to tell uh, the hair system what surface uh, it should point to and the data of its UV map. This is actually something that could be, like in the future, perhaps picked up from the hair object, but it's not currently there. So I'm going to just drag down like that, group inputs, and plug in surface UV map. So that means that if I go to the modifier here, I can point to the surface growth mesh, and also point to the UV map. So here you set an explicit value, but what I want to do is for it to pick up the UV map. Great, we have hair. Let's drag this out so you can see. So here I'm just going to increase the density. And since we want to create a lot of hair, we currently have like a thickness that is like, it's going to be unreadable. Set this to 5,000, for instance. It's just like a mess. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a little curve profile. So this node, <clears throat> now I'm going to set it to a really low density instead so we can sort of see what happens. The hair curve profile sets the radius of the curves. And as you can see currently, that the root is thick and the tip, uh, roots and tip. So this is thin currently. So there's an, <clears throat> a variable or a parameter, I guess, called shape on most of the hair uh, nodes. So that means like if you set this to one, um, oops, just the hair, uh, the, the tip, will be affected, and if you go down to towards zero, the effect will happen on the entire curve, and if you go negative, it's going to be like only the root is affected. Yep, like that. So I'm going to set it to sort of like just a tiny bit, and I want to Radius of 005, so it's really thin. Now we're going to increase the density again. Cool. Okay, so now it's time to create some clumps. Clump hair curve, there we go. Just dropping that in there. And if you have any questions during the talk, like raise your hand or scream or something, uh, I know that I can go a bit fast sometimes, so it's good to hold me back. Okay, so now we can see that we have a bunch of uh, clumps here. And if I change the shape towards zero, you will see that it's going to be super thin. And these are going to be the wide clumps, so we don't want them very, very thin. But I'm going to set it to sort of like 
0.3 or something. And then, um, like, the thing you can do is change the guide distance. So this is sort of like procedurally uh, setting how many clumps there will be. So if I set the guide distance to a fairly high value, you will get a uh, few, few clumps, like because the, the radius is bigger, the distance to the guides. And you can also, but like in this case, I want to explicitly use uh, these curves that come in. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So this means that I'm using these curves explicitly to clump the hair. Right, and I am going to reduce the factor so that the clumping is not that super obvious. Should be like somewhat, but not very much. So what I like to do is just like before, after, before, after. Okay, we will settle for that. Let's take this, put it in a frame with Shift P, and call it Wide Clumps. So one thing I would like to do as well is using like a density map. And lo and behold, it's already prepared. <laughs> so <laughs> what we usually have an issue with is getting enough density in the parting area. Uh, so, I'm, so I painted that white, then I painted the rest of the area 50% gray and black where I don't want any hair at all. Reproduce hair, okay. So what I want to do now is take that texture and plug it into the uh, density mask in the interplate hair curves node. So I'm going to search for a texture, we have image texture, and here I can use the drop down, search for density, it's there. And if I'm just going to plug this in, I might think it works, but it doesn't. Why is that? Because uh, you need to tell geometry nodes how to map this texture as well. So I'm just going to uh, take named attributes <coughs> and write UV map, because I know that's the name of the UV map. Whoop, move it a bit like that. Okay, let's create a ramp. But why would you do that? You have already created the texture. Well, the reason for that is like, since I painted a lot of the area 50% uh, gray, I can just place this little thingy here at slightly over 0 0.5 value, and then I can dial this exactly as I want. So, now it's connected to the density mask. Very cool. Just going to frame that, call it density. So, now it's time to create those thin clumps. So since I already have a setup here, I am going to, I also want to, it would be nice if I can control the density from outside, like here in the uh, modify area. So I'm just gonna drag this down. I guess I can't do that. Density, and I want to have Multiply, oh, I need to do this. I want to multiply this. So basically, I want to have uh, the density of the wide clumps. I want to multiply that with a, like a global value so I can quickly like reduce the density if uh, things become too slow or whatever. So I'm pulling this down. 
pressing N. So we can see here, I created this density. I'm going to call it density wide, like that. And then we'll call this global density. Set default to 1, minimum to 0. And Bob's your uncle. Cool. Nice. Now I can just select this little setup, bring it up here, plug in the density stuff, put it in the mask, create a little reroute and plug it in here. Ah, oh. no! <laughs> okay, that's better. Thank you, Node Wrangler. Okay, so control shift clicking over here to look specifically at the thin clumps. And, you know, I showed you those colors earlier. So I'm just going to, um, it's kind of nice to, when the hair has the same color everywhere, it's sort of hard to visualize what you're doing sometimes. So one way of doing that is to, you know, setting colors to stuff. Uh, so... I'm going to create a named attribute. Oh, it's called store. Store named attributes. Drop it there. No hands up. Okay. What should I call this? I had written it down somewhere. Okay. So I'm going to call this call ID. And I'm going to change this to color. And I want to set this color to a nice red, just like those boxes that uh, Tom showed earlier. Very open source. Oh no. Why is it? Yeah. Just going to put this over here as well. And I just like, you just have to trust me that I have an attribute in the shader that sort of picks up this value, uh, but we're not going to have enough time to go into that, I think. So now I have the white clumps down here. We have the other clumps down here, and I sort of want to merge them and look at them together. So I'm just going to do this thing. Creates a join geometry node. Look at this. Reproduce here. Uh, but Daniel, it's all yellow. Yeah, that's because it's overlapping. It has the exact same setup. So what I want to do here is change the clump value or something. Huh. Red. Yellow, together. Okay, great. So now I can much more easily see what I'm doing here. So these should be thin, right? Point 0.2. That's the perfect number, almost. Let's do that. And here you can see, like, since... I'm picking up those uh, curves that I have groomed. Like the, the shape of everything is exactly the same, but I want to have this like nice overlap that you have in here. So the question is how I do that. And I remember, oh, I did this uh, hair curves noise and roll curves. I'm just going to be super lazy and duplicate that and bring that up there. So now I'm creating like a exact copy of the same setup and here in the hair curves noise there's a seed value and I can change that and voila we have like different shapes and nice overlap on the wide and thin uh, clumps and I can also scale uh, the frequency of the noise a bit I get more 
frequency. Great. So currently, like I showed you that you can use guide distance if you didn't want the uh, input hairs to create the clump shape. But sometimes it just doesn't interpolate the way I want it, like especially here with the center line. So what I want to do is uh, create another set of uh, guides. So I could basically just take uh, this interplate setup, duplicate it over here. This might seem overly uh, complicated, <clears throat> but after a while, when you start working with this, uh, it kind of becomes second nature, hopefully. So I just need to reduce the density quite a bit here. I don't want that. Okay. So you can see here when I when I reduce the density, we start controlling the amount of uh, curves being spawned. So that's good. So now we have the thin curves and the uh, wide clumps. So, <clears throat> so one thing that is an issue that is reoccurring in almost all hair systems is at the center line, it's very hard to get enough coverage and getting, you know, not having them look bald. Let's see if I can jump back to shading here and go to this. So this is a, like a node setup that, that I've done myself here. Um, you know, I had that parting center with a, with a vertex group. So basically, I take a copy of the growth mesh and deletes everything except for that center line. And then I sort of like, okay, within a specific distance from that center line, uh, find all the root points and just snap it to the center line. So now if I choose mix, oh, it's the wrong mesh. Growth, ah, oh, perfect. So impressive. Uh, so you can see here, if I set this to zero, nothing happens. If I set it to one, it, uh, it just snaps all the hairs to the center line. Um, I won't be able to have the time to go into how this works in detail, uh, but like it's a thing to think about with your own setups and actually the next thing I'm going to do will be very similar so hopefully you will learn from that <clears throat> so looking at this I think it's like super flat up here and what I want to do is create this kind of like that kind of thing so uh, how do I do that well I want to bring in the growth mesh just get that center line and then measure the distance of each uh, curve point and then deform it somehow. And we have this amazing diff, uh, hair, hair displays, displays hair curves. I love the search menu because I always forget the specific name. So here again, it asks us for the surface and the surface UV map. So I'm just going to get a group input, and that is the stuff that we had down here. Uh, so I'm getting the surface, oh no, and the surface UV map. And now, if I increase the surface normal displacement, we can see uh, the hair rising. Uh, but I want to like affect the entire hair, except the roots. So we have this reoccurring shape value, right? So I'm just going to set it to 
almost zero. Something like that. Uh, yeah, it's amazing. But it's kind of nice to uh, exaggerate these things so you like you, it's very clear to you what's going on. Uh, whoop. Okay, so now I need to grab that growth mesh. So I'm just gonna. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> when I select something else, uh, the geometry node setup disappears. So I'm just gonna press this little pin so it stays. And then I'm gonna drag this in. Cool. So if I view that, like the shader is transparent, so I'm just gonna have to move to solid. Okay, I think I have like 13 minutes left, maybe. We'll just uh, try to do as much as we can in the time that we have. Okay, so here's the growth mesh that I brought into the hair system. And I wanna delete everything except the center line. And I remember that I had a weight paint group called Parting Center. Perfect. So I'm just gonna mm, grab that somehow. Named attributes. So this will read the attributes from that mesh. And it was called Parting Center. And then I'm gonna say like, okay, so the vertex groups that were red, they have a value of one. So I will compare the, well, the value. And if it is zero, I just want to delete the geometry. Delete geometry. And plug in this. And plug in this. There we go. Almost like... Uh. It's something weird. What is it? I'm not looking at the correct thing. Oh yeah, this is the curse. Okay. Yes, so we had the input geometry and then we can actually look at that attribute. Dis uh, displayed here in black and white. If it's equal to zero, this becomes white and then I delete the points. Now I only have the center line Grab this over here. So, there's a node called, whoops, uh, geometry proximity. So this is looking at the hair points and comparing how far they are placed to um, this mesh. So I'm just gonna plug in that center line into the target input of the geometry proximity node. And look, since it doesn't have any faces, I need to change to edges instead. So now, if I look at this, it all starts coming together. So a distance, well, a point that is very close to the center line will be black, right? Because it's like zero distance. And further away, when we pass the value of 1, it's not going to be able to be, be displayed on screen, right? And I want to have a map range node. So this means, like, let's say this is 0, the distance here is 1. Then I can start to translate, like, <laughs> or remap. So let's say I have a value of 2 down here, here like the distance. I can say like, if the, this value is two, then remap it between zero and one. This will become more clear later on. Now I wanna create a curve, oh, float curve. So this, this one is also a way of remapping values, right? Because here we have a value of zero, here we have a value of one. So let's say zero here, Maybe one is here. So what I want to do is create that little bulge shape. I'm just going to do this. So what happened now? We had a value of zero here, one here, and we are mapping it to uh, zero, one, zero along here. 
and you can see that it's almost too far, and that's where the map range node comes in. So I can just like uh, dial this back. Very cool. And now finally, I can bring this into the factor of the displacement. And we have this amazing, beautiful result. Thank you, geometry nodes. Uh, no, of course, we just need to like dial this back down so it looks a bit better. Let's just do that. And I want to sort of like, instead of having just a bull, I want to like eh, something that looks more like that. So now I can start reshaping this curve to create the shape I want. And now I feel like this shape is too small, so I want to sort of like mwah, bring it further away. And I'm going back to the... You see that? That's amazing! <laughs> Thanks to the Geometry Nodes team. Okay. Yep. Okay, good enough. <laughs>